Welcome to this edition of National Focus. I'm Jana Hector. Coming up, the final draft of the National Land Use Policy is ready for Cabinet's approval. CT scan services resume at the PMH and a call for youth to perpetuate the African culture. Stay tuned for details of these and other stories after this. The black feet of yoga fungus can survive on banana and plantain leaves even after they have been cut from the tree. Farmers and hucksters are encouraged to use alternate cushioning material when moving produce from farm to the market. Do not use banana and plantain leaves as cushioning. It is against the law to move banana and plantain trash from the field. Obey the law and stop the spread of black sikatuka today. Thank you for staying with us. The government of Dominica is one step closer to finalizing a national land use policy for the country. In December 2013, the government contracted the services of Dillon Consulting of Ottawa, Canada to assist with the preparation of a national land use policy and subsequently a physical development plan. Between January and May 2014, the company worked closely with stakeholders and members of the Physical Planning Division of the Ministry of Environment, Fisheries and Physical Planning to develop the land use policy. Associate Planner of Dillon Consulting, Rory Bashk, presented the final draft of the National Land Use Policy to stakeholders at the Garraway Hotel on Monday. I am very pleased to say that subsequent to a round of stakeholder consultation in April, which built upon a initial stakeholder consultation in January, we are now at the point of the project of having a final draft of the National Land Use Policy. This is a significant milestone for Dominica that should be celebrated by everyone in the room because this national land use policy very much reflects the values uh, and the perspectives of Dominicans about how they value the land, the environment, and the future. Baksh explained that the policy reflects the input of Dominicans and will assist in the long-term growth of the country. When you read through the national land use policy, uh, it should be something that is easy to understand because, again, it reflects the values of how you see your land. Uh, it is written from the perspective of an individual Dominique and it is not written from the perspective of a Canadian uh, planning consultant. <coughs> uh, it is intended to be understandable, to be usable, and to help guide the growth and long-term development and prosperity of Dominica in the years to come. Uh, we've developed it because the government said that they wanted to have a policy like this. And we've developed it in accordance with the legislation that prevails over Dominica with respect to land use planning. The Canadian consultant said the land use policy speaks to issues such as development, infrastructure and making connections to communities. It also takes into consideration enhanced forests, the natural environment and agricultural vitality. The national land use policy has six sections. And uh, the most important section of the entire national land use policy is section number five, or part number five, I should say. And that part of the document covers three key themes with respect to the future of Dominica. It talks about modernization and social and economic development. It talks about uh, enhanced natural environment, forestry, and agricultural vitality. And it talks about uh, resilience to climate change and natural hazards. These are things that are top of mind and front and center for Dominicans and re reflect the feedback that we received over the months uh, and weeks of working and collaborating with you. The final draft of the National Land Use Policy was expected to have been presented to the Cabinet of Dominica on Tuesday for approval. With the procurement of a new whole body computed tomography scanner, CT scan services are again available to the public effective May 20th. The scanner, now installed at the radiology department, provides 3D image quality and instant visualization of acquired images. Radiology and maintenance staff have been trained in its use by medical imaging. The health ministry urges that the public keep their appointments and take ownership of their health to continue living a productive life. The ministry also wishes to thank the public for their patience during the disruption of service. The Aquilon 16 whole body CT scanner was purchased at a cost of $1,077,930. In more news, members of the public wishing to apply for financial assistance from the Education Trust Fund have been called upon to adhere to the strict guidelines set by the fund. 
The call was made by administrators of the Education Trust Fund during a press conference on Monday. Vina Roye board member stressed that individuals seeking assistance from the fund must submit applications to the Education Trust Fund office on Cornwall Street by July 31st. It's important that you let us know early. So at this point, you don't wait until October, and some people actually wait until November, until the very week when they should be um, submitting their CXC registration for them to come to the trust fund. Well, you are hearing it now. You need to do it and do it by the end of July. So you apply for CXC examination fees. The options are CXC examination fees, school registration fee, the school transfer grant, the transportation, or textbooks. Some people apply for more than one, depending on their circumstances. The Education Trust Fund responds according to your need, and of course, and the resources. Roy also highlighted the need for applicants to be sincere when filling out the application form. Some people feel that they're not supposed to tell their business. Now, how can we know that you need assistance if you don't tell us your business? Of course, we have always been very, very firm and private about that. Your business, your background information is private information. But of course, we need to know, so you need to tell us. The application form must be accompanied by the signature of an upstanding citizen of the community who is familiar with the financial status of the applicant. That signature would serve as an endorsement of the application. It doesn't mean you just go to the police and say sign for me. What, you put, what is written there is that I affirm that I know the above applicant. So if you don't know, you don't know. Okay. Don't sign something for us and then we find out that, oh, oh, that man has three buses on the road and that man has business here, there, and there. And you have signed to tell us that this person is a needy person. So we expect people to be very honest with us, very serious about the Education Trust Fund, and show your seriousness by giving us correct information. Application forms can be obtained from the Ministry of Education and at Village Council offices. The Education Trust Fund was established in 1981 to assist less fortunate families who have financial difficulty in providing for their children to attend a secondary school. In other news, the Reginald Fitzroy Armour Hospital and the care of the elderly, both in Portsmouth, were recipients of fresh local produce last Friday from the Ministry of Agriculture. Following the formal end of the first Agri-Forest Festival, the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry took the entire exhibition to those organizations to assist with their operations. At the Portsmouth Hospital, Harold Geist, Permanent Secretary in the Agriculture and Forestry Ministry, had the honor of handing over the goods. It is indeed a very wonderful privilege for, for, for us, for the Ministry of Agriculture, to make this donation to the, to the Portsmouth Hospital. As you may be aware, we have an uh, agri-fest uh, this week, and um, we have some items here. And then we, we think it was fitting to, to donate some of these items to the hospital because we understand that you are also about health management and also food and nutrition. So we have some nutritious food. We have probably all of the food groups here. We have carbohydrates, we have vegetables, and I think there may be some fruits. There is mango. So, so, so we have, it is a great privilege. And then, and then we, we hope that your, your patients and your staff enjoy it. Departmental Sister Nurse Hippolyte accepted the gifts. We are very, very grateful. Um, this will cut our, our food bill a great deal. So I really appreciate this gesture this afternoon. So thank you very much on behalf of the patients, the staff, and also the community of Portsmouth. On to Care of the Elderly, a non-profit organization based in Lago, Portsmouth, where Executive Officer Ernest Pascal accepted the gift. On behalf of Care of the Elderly, right, 
we welcome this gesture of um, food item, which is beneficial to our feeding program. We are feeding 60 elderly people every week and 33 children. And this item is valuable to our feeding pro program. I thank you very much. Parliamentary representative for the Portsmouth constituency, Honorable Ian Douglas, says the government of Dominica and the Ross University School of Medicine continue to maintain excellent relations. Honorable Douglas, who is also the island's tourism minister, was addressing last Friday's white coat ceremony where over 200 more students began clinical studies at the university. The minister says efforts continue by the current administration to ensure that students are comfortable during their studies. There are a number of amenities that have been placed here in Portsmouth for your comfort and for your convenience. Um, some of them, some of those amenities are about the best um, you will find in Dominica. And that is because we pride ourselves on your comfort while you push through the rigors of your study. With a need to harness the cultural resources of Africa and to enhance youth appreciation and understanding of the African heritage, the Division of Culture, in collaboration with the National Youth Council and the House of Nyabingi, officially commenced Africa Week. The Honorable Acting Prime Minister Ambrose George, in addressing the function, said he was pleased with the initiative since it targets greater youth involvement in Dominica's cultural background. I am particularly pleased that this year the focus is on the youth as embodied in the theme, and I quote, youth embracing our African heritage, unquote. I therefore applaud the National Youth Council for its active participation in the planning and execution of this year's celebration. The connection with Africa is part of our DNA, our history, our culture, our identity, our common development issues. This year, given the focus on the youth, it is important that we as adults assume our responsibilities to the youth and not continue to perpetuate the negative stereotypes of Africa. If we as adults fail to embrace our African heritage, we are doing our children, our youth, a disservice. The young people, too, need to engage with Africa. Engage with the Africa in us. Representative of the House of Nyabingi, Bernard Aimani Shaw, gave remarks on the significance of this year's observance and applauded government's assistance in dismissing suggestions of Africa Week as a solely Rastafarian tradition. This year is also significant as we attempt to facilitate, as the years go on, more participation from we, the descendants of African slaves in honor of our African ancestors, and especially our Negma, our heroes, who fought and died for liberation. As has been customary for the past years with government's active involvement, aimed at making this day a truly national event. The cultural division of the Ministry of Sports, Youth, of Youth, Sports and Culture is part of the organization. And thus we applaud these two organizations for assisting in destroying the myth that African Liberation Day is a Rasta thing. The Honorable Minister for Culture and Youth Affairs, Honorable Justina Charles, also expressed hope for increased youth participation and encouraged guardians to play an active role in facilitating the transfer of the African culture. We need to encourage the youth through educational, cultural and social activities which lead to a better appreciation of our African culture and identity. A better appreciation for the current realities in Africa. A better appreciation that will allow us to condemn particular outrage, outrages and or negative behavior that may be linked with our past. 
In observation of a culture that has shaped societies around the world and individual ways of life, numerous stakeholders supported the opening ceremony of this week's celebrations. Tobik Aileen, otherwise known as Thobbs, the Zulu Queen, was one of those individuals. I remember a time in Africa where gods walked as kings. I remember the place called Ethiopia, the holy place, the father and mother of all dynasties. I remember the sunburnt people creating a land called Kemet, now known as Egypt. I remember a time in our black story when we knew that God is in everything and everything is in God because one could not separate themselves from the light that shone every day. I remember a time in our black story when we knew that I and I, you and I, all of we are the ones and ones of this nation. Yes, Willie Lynch, I take back my mind. I take back my womb and I'm healing myself from all kinds of sickening rapes. Just like the river Unum Kubulwano, this queen is gonna rise because my descendants are Queen Ya Asandiwa, Queen Nayavingi, Queen Nayavingi of the mountains of Ghana. I am the daughter of Africa. African students of the All Saints Medical University also contributed to the ceremony through dance. Other performances included a chant from the house of Naibingi. And that's the English news. Marcus and St. Louis is up next with the Creole highlights. Hello tout le monde, bienvenue à cette nouvelle en créole. Non moi, c'est Marc Fusin Saint Louis. Premièrement, le gouvernement dominé a mis attention à ce qui est habilitation chimie tout mon pays là. Parole celle-là sortie au ministère Public Works, on a voulu répondre blackmore. Nous aussi nous avons travaillé sur ce barrage chimie. On savait chimie là hors barrage pour délice. On l'a nous calbati en pont neuf, White River délice, Boutika. Place dans au délice par par place ça qui bien dangereux. Nous tapis l'argent en haut World Bank pour faire ça. Avec avant moi septembre, nous supposons commencer à travailler ça. Ça c'est pareil bien bien pour pour nous. Aussi haut pour casser pour Cap Verdeur, Cassie Bruce, Petit Souffre. Nous tapis l'argent en haut World Bank pour battre chez mes ça. Nous aussi nous tapis l'argent pour pour um, adresser la place à la centre Roma, à la Bafé State, um, pour c'est une place qui est bien dangereuse, um, pour, pour partir, um, pour ça qui est un gros cliff qui là, um, pour nous stabiliser ça, ça c'est bah, bien important pour nous. Ce so, sont so, les projets que nous avons gardés pour le gouvernement de la Libre Parti. Si nous ne pouvons pas faire, qui manque de faire En d'autres nouvelles, trois gros projets de développement qui ont place en constituency de la Sud à présent. Mon parlement honorable Ambrose George visitait ces projets la semaine passée. Yon ces projets là ces travail qui cap prend place à ces plein fil en Lubier qui honorable George fait collaboration yon 100 000 dollars l'argent nous pour check temps qui passe. Selon on parole qui sorti, chez moun ka travail à ces projets salam et puis yo tout pour fini fazion. Yon l'autre projet sport qui ka bat ici en Kingsill. Selon mon parlement honorable Ambrose George le projet celle-là qui a coûté 200 avec 50 000 dollars, facilite l'encabati pour assister jeunesse, communauté salam, engagée en bagaille positif en sport. 
phase yon projet sala ka kontine. Honorable George, bien plaisir ki travaille a ce projet sala, se hod kom yonite la mem. Travaille a ce projet la, aussi d'accord, pour quatre jours payement, et puis yon ke a le pou anye la jam. Honorable George, fè pa wol ki moun bien ka apwe ce projet la, et bien ka gade le vent, et fini bati. Yon projet pon an fortune, aussi bati. En dot nouvel, gouvernement Dominique bati un système de l'eau neuf pour la communauté belge à Penrise. Parole cela, sur le même parlement, on a vu qu'elle va dire. Belge, Penrise, ça c'est la place là nous avons à pour le pour globe. C'est un projet qui a, qui a coûté 4,5 millions de dollars. Et puis le gouvernement, ça là, nous, nous, c'est un gouvernement là où, là où, là où nous faisons une promesse. Nous ne pouvons pas promettre ça là. Et puis c'est ça nous avons fait Hot Belge et Penrise. Et puis actuellement, nous avons nous déjà tapé un, un contrat pour le projet là. Et puis le contrat là, il nous pousse un contrat là. Et bien là, il, là, il fait ça, le projet là, c'est qui a commencé. Nous anticiper pour, euh, pour un 30,000 gallons de tank et puis un 45,000 gallons de tank pour le pour, 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 pour gros là. Et puis, Bells, vous savez, c'est une communauté, il y a un plus monde, et c'est une un white communauté. Et puis, Penrise, 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 Penrise. So nous nous can expect projects là pour commencer uh, uh, maybe about three four months down the line. Et bien, ça c'est un, un bon projet pour communauté. Nous can mener glow pour basse moun là. Et puis finalement, ça fait qu'à continuer développement agricole sustainable, c'est l'inscription qui a prend place à présent manière pour Dominique pousser du vent et puis développement économique en l'occasion bien moderne qui a mettre attention à ce agriculture. Dominique China Modern Agriculture Center ouvre la porte semaine passée. Ministère agriculture, Honorable Matthew Walter, en parole et délivré pour te ouvrir facilité là, créer à ses habitants pour travail bien formidable en business agriculture. Honorable Walter, qui ministre organise le festival agriculture, ni hôtel confiance qui agriculture ça joue en pas autant significant en développement économique sustainable. Officier Aïka Kent Coppel, on se fait par Wall qui agriculte sa joué en pas autant significant pour le développement économique sustainable. Merci, mesdames. Ça, c'est tout pour nous faire la pour présent. Non, moi, c'est Mac Fusil Au revoir. Do you struggle with consuming the recommended daily quantity of water? Stay tuned for help. What's your dinner? I know, but you want Cheryl. Cheryl? Oh, babes, that's nothing. Nothing within there, but that is nothing. Ah, oh, whatever. You know you're my number one. But she's number what? Ten? Plenty married women get to hear from the husband these days. I don't want to be one of them. From now on, I'm looking out for me. But babes, I only talk to the woman. Until I'm certain, this will take care of both of us, if you're lucky. Your family depends on you. Don't take home aids. In studio discussions, Insight, Creole News, Road to the Throne, Calypso, Creole Festival, Carnival, and lots more local programming. See it all on the Government Information Service, your first for local news. To incorporate more water into your diet, you can eat it. Fruits and vegetables contain large quantities of water in proportion to their weight. When these foods are eaten, the water is absorbed by the body. I suggest watermelon, broccoli, cabbage, grapefruit, tomatoes and cucumbers. All of those are at least 90% water. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Friend us on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash GISnewsDominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here on the GIS News Desk, thanks for watching and join us again next time on National Focus.
Thank you.